how are you doing? Hello, hello, Christina. Thank you so much for inviting me for the interview. I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I don't know, it's incredible about 40 degrees almost, and we have uh, 8 p.m. Helsinki, in a way, hell, Cairo. Yeah, yeah. Here in Finland, it's, uh, well, uh, spring was not here at all, and now it's uh, summer, even if it's not compared to the hot temperature that is there, because 21 degrees for me is like fine. I can, I can uh, stand with this temperature, but I'm a winter person, so thinking about almost 40 degrees um, makes me feel uh, like I'm dying. <laughs> I don't know how you can how you can live with the temperature. Uh, I have like uh, maybe six fans around me, not fans per se, but fans who make wind at least. <laughs> so you can breathe a bit. I can, I can. Yeah. But uh, first of all, uh, I want to ask you how is your name pronounced. Because I don't okay, want to I... pronounce it wrong. <laughs> it's tricky. It's Andre, but there is no problem if you will call Andrew or Andrew. Andr Andr Andre. 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 Perfect. <laughs> I think that maybe the Polish names are the most tricky to pronounce, or maybe not in Europe, maybe. <laughs> uh, Polish. Uh... But I learned uh, living here, uh, Polish, uh, Arabic, Chinese uh, are not comfortable. First names to pronounce, true, but Polish is very tricky language, especially this shish, shish. Yeah. I'm sure that you are very familiar in some, some way, somehow. Yeah, but uh, you are originally from Poland, but you are living in Cairo, in Egypt. So how did it happen? How did you end up How there? It's happened. How it's happened? It's happened 16 years ago. When uh, before internet dating and many other things, I uh, met my wife on uh, on the place that I call my schools. Before Facebook and meet and other things and love to the music. Love to the band that's called Botart. I don't know that you are familiar. Yeah, yeah, love, love it. So we find each other on the same page. And this is how it started. Back then, it was big, great story, great love story. After three months, we decided that we belong to each other. That she's love of my life, and I am love of her life. Uh, it sounds very simple, of course. It's long story short, but... Uh, and then I say, okay, I can actually, I can go to Cairo. I want to, I, I, I wish to start a new life. I was in my 50s, so I think maybe it's time to start with something different without thinking. If I do this for love, it's even better. So this is how it starts. And 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't your wife originally from Italy? It Am is. Okay. You are very right. You are very good informed. <laughs> uh, my wife is half Italian, uh, okay. half Egyptian. Okay, nice. uh, my mother in law is Italian, 100% Italian. So uh, this transition was not that hard. It was about, for me, it was ah, it's four hours uh, flight between uh, Poland and Egypt. I never think about a kilo. It was like hours for me. Yeah. And uh, this transition was not that hard. Because it was not, my wife is not really, really Egyptian per se. Most of it's an Italian fan. So for me, it was like a, first of all, it was adventure of my life. Secondly, it was like, I'm falling in love. I'm done. I am, uh, <laughs> this is my last, last station of my life. This is where I belong. And this comes. Yeah. Do you ever miss Poland? Do you miss Poland uh, sometimes? Do, do I miss Poland sometimes? Uh, it's a, it's like, this is something that stay in me 
uh, I think everybody left their own country somehow starting knees. You know this childhood Poland, not this adult Poland. This childhood Poland, it's this memory is coming to your head yeah. that uh, maybe this kind of point but uh, yeah. You know, you were like talking everybody. about uh, the uh, missing the the childhood memories that you have in in Poland, and I, you know, a few years ago before Corona, actually, um, I went on holiday to my hometown in Italy, and um, I went to a place. Uh, it's a com it's a complex where uh, there is the the sea water, but uh, it's uh, all. Uh, this structure uh, where people pay to go inside and go to the be to the beach, but it's not beach because it's a construction, whatever. And uh, it was so weird because the memories that I had when I was a child was really an amazing place. Then I went there and it was not that amazing. Okay, they didn't do any work, so it's not in a good shape, the place, <laughs> but yeah, it was like, uh, it was more like uh, memories. And then I was like, okay, I have seen this. I don't need to see this place anymore now because anymore. it is going to ruin my memories. <laughs> so it's- you, yeah. Memories that are a little bit tricky because we have this uh, habit to uh, romanticize True. memory, you know. Uh, Oh, before it was better, before it was different times, and we go to this place after many years, and it's like that. Maybe this was just like moving in my head, our past. Yeah. Maybe that's why we move on with our lives. Maybe that's why we travel. Maybe that's why we decided to change the places. Who knows? But I understand. I understand yeah. very well. But... but let's talk about your music, because... Uh, um... You have uh, several uh, demos, uh, EPs uh, on your back, and now you release uh, uh, the, the album Carpe Diem, the best of of Chitovitz and uh, Fire Flights of February, and it was released on 6th of May. Uh, so tell us more about this album. It's uh, for what I have read, it's, uh, um, it's about your creative journey and uh, it's an instrumental uh, um, instrumental uh, collection of stories. Sure. Okay. Uh, four years ago, after the uh, pandemic, uh, uh, years of marriage with my wife, she's not only my wife, but also she's my therapist. She look at me, she, she asked, Statement. I'm trying to tell you something. I think that all this year living with you, that you're the spectrum of ours. You know, this kind of feeling that when you're a teenager and you feel you don't belong, everybody like you, and in the same moment, you don't want to belong to the world that like you. Uh, you, you feel disconnected from the world, no matter what. You feel invited in the same moment. You don't want to feel invited. Uh, you make uh, back then, somebody can call you that you are an eccentric person. After all this, and I fight with this, and I always think, ah, I'm eccentric. I am I'm different. But I cannot name. Life goes on, you grow up, you get a job, you finish schools, you, you have friends, relationships, uh, relationships ended, you started. Uh, Work ended, new work started, and you still feel that something is not right, but you cannot name. Later, I meet my wife, and life goes on in a completely unexpected way. And my wife, it seems so that my wife is watching me in her eyes. And my wife knows how to deal with the autistic one, so because she has special, special certificate. She's like a, uh, she's person who know how to deal with autistic people. And she, she was very delicate for the years. Till things go complicated with me. And she told me, I think, I really think that 
maybe, just maybe, let's check the other aspects of the practice. And just come. Like an adult after 40s, you discover stuff that, oh, oh, so that's why. Right. And everything's starting to have sense. You blame yourself, uh, you analyze your childhood, your teenage stuff, your adult life, your mistakes, your good stuff, bad stuff. Suddenly you are like, so that's why, that's why you make this piece. Or you didn't make this piece. That's why you run away. That's why you go for it. Or you don't want to be in touch with this kind of thing. Or you close the door. Or you open it. It's, you know, it's many factors. Same one. And uh, before that, I was playing. I have, I have my bands. I have uh, music was always just my therapy. You know, my better part of me, something I can express myself. But after that, I decided. You know, it's come with the instant, maybe. But with through the guitar, I was starting to talk about this for myself. I started recording, you know, now technology can make everything that you want to, you can do this from the home. With the help of my friend, uh, Patrick Szymański, or I could say on the bus, music. Uh, as we know each other from the time before internet, you know, forum times, this kind of things. We know each other decade or more. I recorded something. One of my friends decided, let's make for Andrzej surprise and make for Andrzej a CD and vinyl out. Andrzej deserved this. Andrzej fighting about his dreams. When I'm discovered by everybody around me, see my condition. But they, did, they, they, they don't know how, how to name it. My wife see my condition. I don't know how to name it. I said, from where this head, from where this helping hands, this kindness, everybody's, except myself, but it's always like with everybody. Especially if you feel, oh, yeah, I'm fine. doing well, if you are high functional in sort of level in, in life, people will say, you are too strange, you are eccentric, you're doing well. This is what you see. This is the best version of me at this point. Two years ago, we would not have this conversation. You know why? Because I would not show up. Hmm. I would say it's too much for confrontation with the person, even through me. But when you start to understand yourself, then you it's easy when you talk about this. After when I recording this album, my wife said, maybe you should. If you are, I say, yeah, but what if people say that I'm using my autistic spectrum to promote my music? She said, yes, but you don't have like medium fans. That's another thing. I said, but you know, it's always few people will find a way to say something to me. I said, Oof. I didn't find the power on my second album. I'm recording like after six, seven months. Just for myself, I threw to the world our uh, common uh, She helped me so much, so much with the promotion. And, uh, you know, because of that, started contact. Like, uh, I'm really deserve this. I mean, uh, album number three that was in my head, it was like high of witness. My wife asked me, what does it mean high of witness? I say, you know, this is the thingy that I'm living. It's my hive. Then I'm control the situation. It's full of sweetness. But it's weird. This is my instrumental guitar. Work. And it was this. And I find power in myself and the therapy and many, many, many other things. I find the power to talk about this and believe me it's way easier i'm almost 50 i am 47 so discover the stuff 
in 44, it's like, so I was struggling all my life. I give the hard time to the other people. I torture myself without knowing what really going on. And it was easy to say. And my wife told me, if you have one person who may be somewhere there, find your music somehow, some way. That's the win win situation. So I decided, okay, why not? Yeah. You know, uh, there are a lot of uh, people nowadays that are in those last years that are uh, found, founding themselves to be neurodivergent in, in adult life uh, because before it was, uh, th there were not that much uh, um, knowledge. There was not that much knowledge, knowledge. and there was not uh, that much evidence-based uh, while now the research uh, Re really is advanced uh, and uh, sometimes you know I, I, I thought uh, am I also part of the neurodivergent spectrum you know because uh, I always found myself a bit different sometimes from other but I will tell you something but uh, you know I don't I don't know I never did any test I, I so how did you did, did you went, did you go to some uh, uh, doing to do some test? Uh, uh, did you get? I make I make, it's my special test. It's not easy. It's very personal. No, it's opening gates of hell because it's not easy test because you not have to be only open with your It's not psychoanalytic stuff. It's going way deeper. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to discover yourself why you struggle all your life and you cannot name it. Now it's easier. These days it's easier. Now these days uh, it's the spectrum, uh, Asperger, this is nothing special. It's, it's, it's something that we know that exists. You cannot name it. My generation really strike, especially when you become adult, high function, it's like high functional alcoholic, same idea. High functional alcoholic, you don't see him around, you not feel from him and the other. Yeah. But he know that he's, he know that he have to hide behind the curtain of alcohol. The same autistic person. Have to fight every day, hide behind the curtain and uh, Pretends he's fine, but inside he wants to stay at home. He doesn't want to shake the hand. He doesn't want to talk. And the worst the moment when everybody likes hey, everybody. I don't like myself. And I remember my, my therapist say, uh, choice, actually, that inside of us, we all have autistic children. We are all in sort of autistic. Yeah. For example, we have morning routine, like me, coffee, morning coffee. After coffee, I have to eat special food. Most of people who are not autistic have the same kind of routine. I have routine days that if I don't have this in the morning, it's ruin my day. You know, it's like, okay, I don't have morning coffee. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm grumpy for the rest of the day. This is part of this. But of course, when you are autistic, it's all back on from the 20% to 90%. If this routine not go. For normal person, lack of coffee in the morning, it's okay. I will drink something later. For autistic person, lack of the morning coffee is like, okay, my life is real. My life is real, not that. My life is real. And you, go, you have to go through. My problem was that I didn't understand this for years. And I blame myself. You know. So I run away into music. Music was the best shelter I could ever find. Take on the guitar, listen to the music, create music. Imagine that I'm playing somewhere. Uh, yeah, it was my shelter. It was good shelter. Yeah. yeah. And it's safe. Who knows? It's, yeah. It saved me for sure. For sure. Yeah. Music is one of the most important thing in life. I think it's music is life, 
and uh, I think that uh, th there are people that their their life uh, has been saved by music. Uh, just listening music or playing, so music is a re real, really an important thing. And uh, uh, if we think about uh, neurodivergent uh, people, I think that in the music world there are many, but there are many that they don't know that they are in the spectrum. So uh, it's quite interesting, but it's really nice that nowadays the people are talking and it's uh, okay. Uh, neurodivergent people are many and the spectrum is big. Uh, and it's good that, that that finally people can be themselves, can be free to to speak about what they feel inside and uh, and be respect for that because it was not always like this. No, not always. Not all. You know, uh, people sometimes say our times is a hard times. Yes, we live in the weird, we live in the horrible, hard. Time. Very trouble, troubling times. Let's be honest. But in the same moment, what change? People like me, I hate to say this, people like me, because it's always put on new stigma. People like me, people who are a little bit different, finally find a way to talk about this that it's okay to be different. Yeah. It's okay to be different. Also, because, you know, I remember once uh, someone told that this is no normal something and or this person is not normal or I, I'm I'm weird. And then I was like, uh, what, what is normal? Normality doesn't exist. Normality doesn't exist. It's like that. Okay, okay, I'm on the spectrum. But also we know how many things screw things happen to them and people. That fits that normal. Politicians are normal. Um, you know, I can go so on and so on. The worst for people with my condition, say, it's not understand themselves and limit themselves for the mistakes that are in the way of their mistakes. Yeah. It was like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm so sorry, and later. Of course, I don't want to put everything okay. I have explanation for everything. I'm on the spectrum. I can do whatever I want to. But it's easier now for me to live, to know that sometimes I put somebody, or I make somebody happy also, accidentally, because of that. And it's my life. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, talking about the music, uh, what when you when you play, uh, do you have a, a clear idea when you are like writing a song? Do you have a clear idea how do you want the song to go, or it's just that comes like like this, like randomly something some riff start and then you are okay. This this is it. Million people ask me about this. It's like. And she, this reef, which kind of horror is this? I, from where this idea? You are stupid. I don't know. That's, this was my answer. It was like, I analyze my music after when I'm recording. When I'm recording, I'm like in sort of trance. Okay. You know, I have sort of vision. Of course, I know what to play. I know how to, uh, what do I want to say through the guitar. But in the same moment, I'm not analyzed. Analyzed like that. I'm like this. Or I send to somebody. People say, do you know that it sounds like this, 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 Seems so that people in my condition, or my musician staff, or guitarist staff, I go, me, personal, I go by this. I don't know how to name chords. I don't know, I don't know notes. I'm, I learned how to record him, you know how to mix him. But everything what I do, I do by instinct. It sounds so completely stupid. You know, even uh, not selfish, it sounds naive how you can go everything with the instinct. But this is how I learned through the years to create the music by the instinct. Something is good, it's good. Something touching my heart, 
or make me cry, or make me laugh, or make me feel, no, 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 this, this is what I will depend on us, keep attention. In my mini world, you know, it's not something that I know my position in the yeah. long time. Uh, go to the internet and suddenly I will get the two million views. I'm aware of this. That I would get, if 100, I would get. Yeah. It's good. If I have interview like that uh, tonight, it's me. Well, somebody keep attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I have press release, for example, okay, this is more than. And then you know, okay, it's one. People say, maybe it's a boy. No, it's not a boy. It's a boy. Be happy that you have passion. Uh, be happy that you find a way how to fight with your weakness, with your struggle through the music. And if there is audience, even if it's five people, ten people, even if it's one person. It sounds so cliche that it's one person. Uh, people used to say this. There is one person that will do this forever. It's cliche, but it's true. I don't yeah. do this for that. Yeah. If I will do this, I will. Do I wish to do this for money? Of course. Yeah. But I don't do this. And you have to do this for yourself, for for the 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 passion that you have. So music is uh, is art. So it comes from the art. It's art that comes from the heart. <laughs> the art. This is nice. This is very nice. Art. True. Again, it sounds like cliche or very naive uh, words, but that's true. Yeah. The best. I grew up on the bands who are very commercial. I grew up on the bands uh, like Bon Jovi, the Leopard, when uh, when all both these bands make the millions out of the music. I was inspired by them, true, by the notes, by the sound, by the I don't know romantic feeling of the ballad or catchy hard rock uh, sound. Uh, but it's not affecting me this way that I'm lost myself. I can't. It's affecting yeah. something that you not control. Yeah, yeah, true. And uh, what gear do you use? Uh, what guitars do you do you use to play? Uh, I have Casino, Casino, Fender Square, Stratocaster, 60s, with uh, special Jeff Beck, uh, Thinking of something I do ten years ago on the not amount of money but the help of my friends. Uh, that's one. And I so I use uh, very very simple digital uh, iRig. This is audio interface, iPad, show uh, machine. Help of my friends who play on the bus. This is in my hand. It's, that's, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very good stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. So now let's uh, let's see the question that uh, fans or people uh, left you on uh, Metal Pizza Facebook. So the first comment is uh, Taria Vermakari with a uh, emoticon, <laughs> and then there is Leon Gomez uh, that. Uh, Wrote what an interesting in initiative. Uh, I send a big hug to Andre and complete success. Uh, but then uh, there is a uh, Andre Vasilenko that asks, uh, Would you like to do a song together? I noticed this comment it was unexpected. I see this is some singer from Russia. Uh, if you contact with me, I would be very happy. I would be very happy. Actually, I was very surprised by, by this. It will be very nice to contact with me. I don't see anybody. It was a huge surprise because I see this comment before. Yeah. I was like, okay. Lovely. Then there is uh, three questions from uh, Adrian As, if I'm pronouncing correct. Uh, so the first very question good. is, um, who would you most like to invite to work with you as a duo or producer? Uh, difficult question. <laughs> so many things. Do be Bob Rock. Why Bob Rock? Okay. Not because of the Black Album of Metallica, uh, because of the way how he does 
drums. I know we can talk about Saint Anger Metallica, how he do everything wrong. But in his prime, I think it was the best hard rock producer ever. That uh, find a uh, find a way be, between pop music, rock music, heavy metal music, hard rock music. It was John Mudlang from uh, Death Leopard. Yeah, no. so I think yeah, 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 yeah. Very very humble, very humble request. Yeah. Then there is the question, when creating any of your albums, were you heavily inspired by another artist's work? I am. I am. It's hard to believe, but uh, for example, when I people listen to my music and they uh, listen to my instrumental songs, you are ready to join. Are you actually ready? Because I don't hear this. I hear dream yet. Uh, Absolutely, I love them. The yeah. Flepper, Joseph Fiat, Steve Vai. Uh, I think that I find a weird way, you know, this commercial catchy thing uh, between Bon Jovi songs and instrumental work like Steve Vai, Joseph Fiat, Van Halen, some instrumental words. Uh, but if somebody will ask what is the biggest of expressions, I would say it's the Flepper. Yeah. yeah. Because of their guitar huge sound. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Then there is still uh, the last question is uh, what venue, stadium or club would you like to play a concert at? How to feel comfortable and not feel shallow? I went. Yeah, it should be one. Why not? 80,000 uh, 80, people, it will be my dream. One time in my life. But you know what? My dream is, I used to play for the, okay, that's the thing. I don't know that I can back again to my autistic spectrum thing. I used to have event in the Polish Ambassy in Kaga. It was very intimate uh, meeting. It was like 30 people. I was nervous, I was sweating. All I was asked for is play acoustic guitar chords to the theatrical show. And later I noticed maybe it's not for me. Maybe I, I like to stay guy behind the scene recording music. I'll make sort of videos on YouTube and enjoy this. I think that for me, this moment in my life, it just, uh, and this age, in this stage of my life, when I understand myself that making music is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, talking about uh, inspirational music, you know, uh, there was that question now, if, if you ever have, when you are writing an album, doing an album, you were inspired by someone else's work. Uh, I'm curious to know, how did you get to uh, listen uh, rock and metal music? Uh, how? When was the first time that you heard a rock or metal band? Okay, it was uh, this is Asian history, 89. It was, this is very funny story. I have illegal cable TV, my home. You know, it was uh, communist time. My father find a way to find the channels from the satellite. I don't want to ask. I was too young. I was happy that I can see Cartoon Network, MTV, and I know that uh, it was 89, and, I, and he find for me MTV. And I, you know, I was before the music, but when I started, it was, yes, I think it was the time when mainstream was hard rock music, let's be honest. And it was MTV Music Awards, and I never forget that it was uh, Richie Sambora, John Bon Jovi playing on the prayer. Big nice key taps, uh, catchy songs, 
I, of course, I didn't know that this is something I didn't understand what the catchy for me it was like a. And I become addicted to MTV. And uh, I remember the program very late. It was to show in the MTV and can can bangers ball. It's around the midnight time. All hard heavy metal music back then. Jody the Pepper, Tarika, Judas Priest, Matli Kru. And then it's gotcha. And I lost. And I say, this is something that uh, feed my soul. <laughs> it was something that was feeding my soul. Yeah, yeah. and this is how it started. This is okay. And uh, do you remember what was the first album that you went to a store to buy? Uh, again, I have to mention Bon Jovi. I know, I know. Bon Jovi is not that bad band if you look on the past. These days, it's different, but I know. But back then, for for me, for us, it was top of the world. It was yeah. uh, New Jersey album. It was final album. I never forget. And tape cassette. Never forget to find this. It was like, uh, uh, till now, I remember the smell of tape cassette. You know, when you open, you open and you, oh, this is it. And you even not skip the songs, you just listen. Song, something that don't happen these days. Yeah. You're not skipping the songs. Yeah, it's quite different you know? nowadays because with uh, Spotify or whatever other platform, people just you can skip. can skip all the time. But uh... Back then it was like, okay, song this, song this, song this. Ah, side A, side B, side B. Okay. This was the my first time. After this become hysteria, the flavor. When uh, for me it was like oh this is so great. This is lift me up to the heaven. Yeah. This was nice times. This was nice. And what are you listening nowadays? There is any any particular uh, band or artist uh, that you are listening now res my, recently? My taste switch, but it's surprising. I always think that I will listen to the pop metal, put uh, paddle metal, glam metal all my life. Uh, last 10 years, uh, everything started from Five Finger Death Punch. I say, oh, this, is, this is different kind of art in my life. This is something that I, this is still commercial thing, but it's more heavier. Uh, uh, bring the horizon, uh, I don't know. Horizon. Yeah. I think I go into this kind of stuff. Yeah. More heavier, still commercial, but more heavier. Yeah. So the, say, it's this uh, metal core uh, or mm, new metal uh, kind of uh, yeah. This this kind yeah. of stuff. That there commercial is a melody, thing. but it's still kicking. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This is something. Good. It's. I'm discovered this by internet, accidentally. Yeah. Asking Alexandria, for example, yeah. for me it was like, yeah. hey, this is a really tall. This is yeah. You know, it's uh, it's nice because those bands, um, they get a lot of hate from the from the metal community also, because there are some more kind of purist, if we want to to say like this, um, metalhead that. They say this is a pop music, it's not metal, but <laughs> sometimes I think that uh, there are those bands like showing the middle finger to, to everybody, <laughs> just uh, doing what they want. And uh, also there are, you know, a lot of bands that uh, uh, experiment because you uh, growing, you change uh, as a person, so you change also your way to play and you want to play something different, uh, so they just drift away from what they were playing before and people get mad and uh, sometimes I, it's fun to to read on the social media people just getting mad <laughs> and uh, for you know, no reason because the musician is going to do whatever the musician wants is going to be more commercial commercial to to get money okay good for for them is going to do another kind of music because 
in that moment feels it feels that it's the right thing to do that's good <laughs> so i think that there is too much um, sometimes people take everything too much seriously while music is is a serious thing but not serious in that way it's music is for everybody so and uh, people should just if you don't like something you don't listen it you don't listen that's it you know it's bringing back to the end of the 80s when i i remember i said this is on joe your but the same story this is commercial back then for many all of us it was top of the world this was something mellow good-looking guys it was something okay i want to have hair like him i want to play like this the same now people say ah this is uh, not real heavy metal or not real rock but where is the level what it's mean what it's something real or not because somebody's commercial will make money it's not being that there's no soul maybe it's pure accident it's not that you're sitting in the studio and you think now i will be uh, and I will make uh, one million bucks because of the song. I don't think so that this artist really feel this way. It just happened. Yes, there is the background, there is producer, there is manager, there is promotion. But in the end of the day, if there are people who want to listen, it's me. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. That's it true. doesn't matter. It's still metal, it's still rock. If we are stick to this, it's yeah, true. But now let's go with uh, the random topics. So let's open it and let's see what hey. we are going to talk about. I feel like this one is the right one. So social media. So well, we we talk a bit of social media because you met your wife on MySpace. Uh, so did I did I say my wife? <laughs> What did I say to your wife? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just like thinking, what 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 I'm saying? Well, you, you met your wife, your wife. <laughs> it is okay. okay. I'm yeah. open person. But, yeah, so um but my space doesn't exist anymore, or it kind of exists, but is dead. I think that at some point I open my space just to see if I can see still something on my profile. I was do the same a few weeks ago. It was like it's working, but it's not working. Yeah. So something it, is wrong. Something, something back is then it was... not the my space of the of the great day. You know, my space you were just the 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 uh, personalizing your profile was a big thing. Sure. Something that with the other social media you don't have nowadays because you had you put the music that you want. And uh, you put the the background that you want. Uh, you choose the theme that you want. Uh, it was it was nice. Uh, there was a lot of uh, hour of thinking. How do I want my profile to look so people get to know me like this? <laughs> Seems so that you remember this times. Yeah, you remember this time. I I remember. I tell you the I te remember I tell you the most funny story in my life. I back then in the MySpace times, uh, you know, uh, create a band who called 6IM. 6IM. And I used to posting demos, liking the page. And one day I get a like from who? From Nikki Six. From... And James Michael, who was vocalist of 6IM. Like it's okay. It's okay. I get the message, personal message from Jess Michael, who was back then vocalist of 6am. Angie, I was listening to your song. Keep going. I, Of course, I don't remember exactly, but why I'm, I mentioned MySpace with uh, so much uh, romanticized stuff in my heart it was different. You can keep in the touch with the artist so close that you can. You don't like that, that there's million people, you write a comment. This artist can Probably there's a bit of artists who run this page. Back then was different. So uh, yeah, it was different. It was beginning of internet, but it was it was nice times. I would say. Yeah. 
you know, I met through MySpace really nice people and uh, some of my person, some person in my life, some friends, they are still from from MySpace. So we met on MySpace because we were listening to the same band and then we got to meet and we are still friends with my friend Anna. We did uh, travels together uh, and uh, so it's something that... Uh... Same here, same here. Believe me, same here. It's unbelievable. It's We have 2024. Uh, last time when I was in MySpace, it was 2000. I don't remember when, because uh, I remember that I was on MySpace uh, from 2006. 2006 was the year that the summer 2006 was when I created the profile. And uh, then at some point, I think 2007 is when uh, an American friend told me about Facebook. And at that time, there were no Italian people on Facebook. So no. I was one of the first. Also, then uh, they delayed my first profile. So I had to redo, but it's a, it's a long and stupid story. <laughs> Facebook back then, it was a different animal. Everybody hated the Facebook. 2007, 2007, Facebook. MySpace, that's the thing. 2000, the same me, 2006, 2007, this is how I create that now. This was the top. You can change the layout. This was a, your personal page with your own music, friends. Oh, this was, yeah. this was really good times. Different times. Yeah. Let's say different times. What do you think about social media nowadays? Uh, we have a Facebook, Instagram, then there is a TikTok that I don't use. I have never used. So, <laughs> but uh, what's your opinion on those? I wish to not be teenager. Same. <laughs> it will be a terrible. I, uh, I imagine myself having uh, 15 years old and uh, have access to Instagram, TikTok, and uh, Facebook. Uh, should be. I think for my mental. Yeah. Mental mind, mental health. Uh, I'm very happy that I'm adult, that I know what it's been. I wish to not be a teenager these days because it's too much. It's too much. Yeah, yeah. Too much pressure. People look on the photos and say, oh, I want to look like this person. And even if this is fake, and we know that this is fake, but yet we want to look like this person. We know that something is not real, yet we want to look like this unreal. Especially that artificial intelligence coming mm -hmm. to our lives now with all power. We don't know what it's true or lie, yet we want to be part of this. I'm happy to be adult and I'm sad for the teenagers who have to struggle because it can cause many, many damage. I'm not look optimistic in the future, but in the same moment, all generation when like all that not look optimistic in the future. In our times, and back to our times, this was the best times. And there is still confidence. Yeah, yeah, true. But let's pick another uh, another topic. So let's see what's the the second topic. So embarrassing moments. Uh, so something that you at that at the time that happened, you were a bit ashamed, uh, embarrassed. Embarrassed. Well, this is too, uh, too, too mad, eh? Too mad, eh? The biggest. And I decided that when I shave my hair very short and new profile photo, a good idea, and that in my head I look like a goose. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that everybody has those embarrassing moments uh, in life, you know, that you maybe you dress in a way that it's not flattering, you do a cut that is not flattering, or you do something that is not that clever. And I'm I'm the in that category mostly doing not clever things sometimes. <laughs> and probably probably I'm choose the most uh... 
kind. Yes, that's the most kind, the most easy to <laughs> yeah. care for. Yeah. Do you know when I think about the most embarrassing moment? Um, when I was optician in Italy, I remember we had uh, uh, this um, manager that was always uh, pranking us on uh, phone calls. And I remember that once uh, a person with the same voice of him call to have information and then i start telling uh, please stop to do those prank uh, it's not funny anymore and this person was like uh, i'm i don't know what you are talking about and then i feel flattering if you think that i'm a younger person that is uh, pranking and then i was like so embarrassed and uh, yeah i felt so bad but you know those things matter. happen this is, the, this is the most easy thing that we can carry. Embarrassing things, I think, uh, no, it can be more disaster. I have, but I will not share because it's just, it's disaster. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just that in the in the um, closet. <laughs> the best, yeah, but uh, let's talk about the most important thing in the world, and it's pizza. <laughs> Do you like pizza? Uh, my life is pizza. Nice. Pizza is my life. And before I met my wife, I think that I love pizza. You know, when you're living in a foreign country, like in Poland, you eat pizza. You eat pizza with many places. You eat pizza with ketchup. I know, I know, it's horrible. It's sin. But when I met my wife, and my wife told me, eat pizza, no. So why can pizza, you know? From the ground, so uh, from the bread, the cake, the cheese, make at home. Pomidoro, pomidoro is Italian? No. Huh? Huh? My wife just came to you. How is it in Italian uh, pomidoro? It's okay, you are conducting okay, this. Okay, okay. So. Now I say, uh, don't bother. You said, okay, thank you very much for helping me. <laughs> Come on, tomato, basil, oregano. So this is the mozzarella. Mozzarella. Yeah. yeah. This is no. I'm. I. I can eat pizza in on breakfast. I can eat pizza uh, on lunch. I can eat pizza on dinner. I love pizza. I love pizza. Yeah. I think that most people in the world love pizza, so that's 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 why it's the most important topic of this interview. <laughs> people who not eat pizza are uh, not our friends. Yeah, <laughs> but um, do you have a favorite pizza? Uh, uh, do I have favorite? I like pizza with uh, salami. Okay. It's the most simple answer. I will tell you the truth, and I know that you like an Italian. You will kill me. I like to put sometimes. What do you put? Uh, no, I didn't say it's love. But this is me being Polish. Yeah. Forgive me. I forgive you I, <laughs> for this time. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but this is my favorite. But serious, I love pizza in any, any possible way. Here in Cairo, we have any uh, we have pizza at uh, Papachmos. I like what? Quattro. Quattro, eh? Formaggi. Quattro. <laughs> this is what I like. Yeah. This is what I like. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There are a lot of people that love Quattro Formaggi pizza. I'm I'm most uh, you know, I'm I'm a bit of this uh, maybe more picky person, so I take always uh, of course not in Finland because it's not possible to have it, but in Italy when I go to Italy, I always order the margarita plus olives, black big olives and strachino cheese. That's uh, my 
my strong taste pizza. Stragino cheese. Stragino cheese. Eva bene. Eva bene. Uh, my wife says something in Italian. I'm not understanding. <laughs> bene, I know that it's good. Okay. Eva bene. Yeah. We, we don't have it. We don't have this here in Cairo. Yeah. Now I want this pizza. <laughs> But, so it is like yeah. an optic if I were in there. Yeah, but uh, you know, the world is dividing in a two. So, pineapple, yes, pineapple. No. No. <laughs> no pineapple, no pineapple. No, this is disaster. This is disaster. This is, I don't know how it's working. No, oh, this is so bad. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm agree. I'm agree. I. You know the scene from Inglorious in Bastards? Uh, there is a movie, Inglorious Bastards, uh, when Brad Pitt pretends to speak uh, in the Italian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gurulami. This is pizza with this excellence. Gurulami. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> this is fake. Yeah. But now let's get to the question that the previous guest left you. So I'm okay. opening my my book of questions, and the, the if I'm not kicking or eating my microphone is good. So the the question is why keep going on this, and he mean what uh, in what you are doing, why keep going in uh, doing music, for example. Why I keep going to doing music uh, because it's my life. It's one day I will stop going on music. It's me that I'm not hearing. Yeah. I don't want to that sounds dramatic or again, what I'm saying before cliche, but uh, it's my life. Yeah. It's my life. Making music, listening to music, be around the music. Uh, it's the best therapy that ever happened. Who knows? It saved my life. Maybe it's opened my eyes for everything that happened around me. Maybe. It's helped me go through the most darkest time. I always say that music is a soundtrack to my life, sort of yeah. songs. Yeah. But accidental music make me feel a life like this. Yeah. Not always friendly words, not always happy days. I will keep going till I hear. I have health, I have two uh, healthy hands, I will play. Like I told you before, even if this is five people, even like today, I think that interview, if somebody will tell me 30 years ago, you will have interview on Zoom from lady from Italia who gave it to me. Okay, I will not believe in this situation. What is happening? Later, watching myself, but <laughs> this is something that it's worth. It's this is moment that I will carry in my heart because it's something, you know, the small, small things that I keep myself when I was 15 years old. Maybe the second job, job, I did it because of my spectrum, because of me and other things. But the small things make you feel okay. There are people who keep interested and ask about your music. Maybe it's all good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. And also, you know, I always like to say that uh, music is a poetry for the soul. It is. It is. It's beautiful. Yeah. Product. And, uh, but now it's your turn to leave a question for the next guest. And it can be whatever you want. Anything. Can be anything. Can be any guest. Can be guitarist, can be singer, can be drummer, can be bass player. Yeah, I don't know uh, who is going to be it. next. I still have to, to sure. contact. <laughs> okay. Why you love so much great news? That's my question. Okay. Good one. Good one. Yeah. And um, yeah, we are at the end of this uh, 
episode of Metal Pizza. So thank you so much for being my guest. It was really a pleasure and you had so many nice stories to tell us. And would you like to say something to people that are watching or listening this? I want to say to the people, who, this is my mission. It sounds very bad, but okay. If there is one person who feels disconnected from it, or think uh, war overwhelmed or everything is too much in life. War is too much. But find your high weirdness, your find work that you can wake up next morning and say, I can do it. No matter what happened behind you. Even if you scream inside your soul and say, I don't want to do this anymore. Find something that keep you mother. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And it's re really important because life is not easy. And uh, I think that everybody face at some point in their life difficult moment. And uh, it's important to find the, the, the strength or that passion that keep you going and uh, help to find you yourself. It's, I remember that it's all R.E.M. song, right? It's everybody hurts. Everybody hurts. Yeah, yeah, true. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.